Affordable Sustainability, One Community Weekly Progress Update number 286. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do-it-yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution-creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is Jay Siebel, and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 51C3 nonprofit organization. This is our weekly progress update number 286, September 16, 2018 edition. One Community's mission, if you're not familiar with it, is to bring together the people with the consciousness for the highest good of all life on this planet and to create self-replicating teacher demonstration hubs as a path to global sustainability. And to achieve that, we're addressing all the foundations of sustainability and creating open source tools, tutorials, resources, and do-it-yourself instructions for all aspects of highest good living. This includes highest good food, highest good education, highest good housing, highest good energy, highest good economic models, fulfilled living models, and true stewardship models. And putting all these things together as an evolution of sustainability that we think most people will consider to be better than the way that they're living right now. And so today what I'd like to talk about is affordable sustainability because all of these things create an affordable lifestyle and they're designed to make sustainability more affordable too. We don't talk about it much as far as our bigger picture because we're not there yet as far as getting to the point where we could do this, but a big foundation of what one community is doing in open sourcing and free sharing everything that we're doing, including the labor statistics, materials needed, and equipment needed to build everything that it is that we're open sourcing, is to streamline the purchasing process and bring down the prices for consumers to create a direct relationship between consumers and providers that will make sustainability more affordable. We believe that there's a path to eliminating or the waste of packaging and things like that through community models like what we're creating. And that path is through large-scale bulk ordering direct from suppliers whenever possible. To use the same models that restaurants are using to be able to buy directly our equipment, our materials, our food that, need, that can't be produced on property. All of these things can be purchased in bulk for cheaper prices. And if we're purchasing them in bulk and bulk containers and things of that nature, they can be purchased in a way that saves money for the consumer, it saves money for the provider, and eliminates the middleman. It creates a direct relationship between consumers and providers such that we can reduce the costs for us and improve the uh, revenue for the consumer, for the provider as well. So it's a win-win relationship. And really we call it a win-win-win relationship because it's also a win for the planet in that it reduces the amount of packaging that's needed to provide things. Think about things like flour or grain, which we've identified as items that make more sense to purchase than to grow. For our location, it's really not a good location for growing grain. And if you're gonna grow, purchase something like wheat or soy, it's so much cheaper to buy it than to produce it unless you're producing it really large scale. And we're not saying they won't get to that point, but it makes more sense for us to purchase more high-end items than staples like that for, uh, I'm sorry, it makes more sense for us to grow high-end items rather than staples like that because flour is so cheap to purchase because it's so cheap to produce on a large scale. And so for purchasing something like flour, why not purchase it in 50, 50 gallon drums? Why not purchase it in large, huge containers and then just use what you need? And the biggest, the bigger expression of this would be that if we can set up purchasing like this for things like grain, for things like soy and stuff like that, salt, seasonings, these kinds of deals, then we could also sell them. People could come to one community and be able to purchase, bring their own containers and fill them up and buy these products by the pound, which is what we're doing right now. But everything is designed in single serving packages, you know, and so you get your little plastic wrap package of this piece of food and that piece of food, and you buy 10 or 12 of them because you need enough for each day, you know, or you buy yourself a five pound uh, bag of flour. What if you could just bring in your own container and you would just purchase the weight of it and it would be cheaper than what you could get at the grocery store, higher quality because we have already vetted who are the producers to make sure that it's a quality producer that's using sustainability practices and you can purchase what you need in your own container and just take it home. And for one community, we would be able to do this for everything that we use within the community. Dishwashing detergent, there's a lot of things that we can't produce for ourselves, at least not initially or won't be initially. You know, things like soap and dishwashing detergent and uh, 
you know, the food items and stuff that I mentioned, all these different things could be purchased in bulk, bulk. And the same thing goes for lights and anything that's a consumable, a reusable, something that uh, you're going through a large volume or that everybody within the community is going to need, like light bulbs. We could purchase those by the hundreds, by the thousands, and bring the cost down. And then we can pass that cost on, that savings on to others in the area, to our local community as well, and be able to offer, again, a win-win-win solution. Win for the consumer because it brings the price, the affordable affordability, it makes the affordability of sustainability more viable. It brings the cost down. It's a win for the producer because it cuts out the middleman, allows them to charge more for what it is, what they feel their product is worth, which is what's being charged at the grocery store anyway, but cheaper because they're the middleman then becomes one community and we're not charging a premium price. Price. We're not marking cut things up 100%. And then, of course, a win for the planet because it reduces all of that packaging, all the material. So this is a big foundation of affordable sustainability for our project and how we're creating that for the world. The same thing applies for all the construction materials, for the city center, for the earth bag villages, for shipping container village. All these different things can be streamlined. We can figure out and we are working through the process of figuring out what the most affordable way and what the easiest way is to purchase materials, to purchase tools, and of course to purchase all the food items that we won't be growing ourselves. And we want to open source and free share and share that so that affordable sustainability becomes accessible to everybody. And so this is what we're doing. It's a big part of what it is that we're creating and how we're creating moral change for the benefit of everybody. And we think that affordable sustainability can be within reach and can be accessible and attainable uh, within our lifetime to the degree such that these models can become self-replicating. Affordable sustainability also includes affordable lifestyles. When you have sustainable infrastructure, your energy bills can be zero. When you have sustainable housing that you're able to build yourself, your construction costs can be radically reduced, you know, because you're providing the labor yourself. And so we're working out all the details and sharing all the details to show people how to do that. And so we're an all volunteer, unpaid, 100% nonprofit organization creating this so that we can live in a world that works for everybody within our lifetime. And so affordable sustainability can spread like wildfire. So affordable sustainability can become viral because we've made it easy enough, affordable enough, and demonstrates attractive enough that the idea will spread on its own. And this is one of the many ways that one community is creating world change for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. So with that said, here's one week of our all volunteer teams, progress and accomplishments, working towards this goal of affordable sustainability, expanding affordable sustainability, forwarding affordable sustainability for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. Check it out. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team continued testing the open source Murphy Bed Furniture assembly instructions. The focus this week was final testing of the back storage and changing area, and we redesigned the fold down bed and fold out tables and benches. You can see some of this work in progress here. The core team also made significant updates to the open source plaster page by adding more resources, updating the table of contents, and adding instructions for how to create wheat paste. Shadi Kennedy, artist and graphic designer, also completed his 21st week leading the development of the Murphy bed instructions. This week he continued development of the initial bed box assembly instructions and started final revisions for the clothing and storage section now that the core team finished the final assembly testing of this area using SketchUp 3D. Mike Kowalski, game developer, finished his 20th week helping update our renders that are too big for anything but a gaming computer. This week Mike redid these three Earthbag Village renders with all closed doors and made fixes to the trees and lighting. The core team then edited these and several other of Mike's images and added them to the Earthbag Village and Tropical Atrium open source hubs. You can see some of these new additions here. Hamanth Kotaru, structural engineer, completed his 21st week helping with the structural engineering research and calculations for the Earthbag Village. This week's focus was interpreting the results of all his research on the engineering details of the different kinds of earth that can be used to fill the bags, finding more resources, and starting to create the calculation spreadsheet. Dean Schulz, architectural designer, also continued working on the Earthbag Village. Here's weekly update 130 from Dean. His focus this week was section views of the group table and spa components, 
progressing the new 6 dome cluster layouts and finishing the 3 dome elevations. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. The core team working with Dipti Dondarker, electrical engineer, also continued developing the lighting specifics for the city center. This is Dipti's 94th week volunteering on this task, and the focus this week was these floor-by-floor -floor overview lighting renders that are now on the website also. Doa Feng, civil engineer, also completed his 20th week working on the fire suppression and safety systems designs for the Duplical City Center Sprinkler and Emergency Systems Open Source Hub. This week, he finished the calculation updates for all the remaining zones, updated all the references for the tutorial, and calculated the reservoir size needed to support the system. Hayes Lay, structural engineer, also finished his last week working on the City Center Structural Engineering. What you see here are the wrap-up documents sharing what has been completed and what still remains to be done by the next volunteer team. Last but not least, Anvita Kumari Pandey, civil engineer, completed her 22nd week volunteering by working on final details for the Duplical City Center materials and costs and beginning work updating the Earth Bank Village materials and costs with the same level of detail, some of which you can see here. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. This week, the core team continued writing the behind the scenes narrative and detailed food rollout plan for the various stages of development. We continued our comprehensive review of the complete 20 person food rollout and implementation details. This included further integration of our related webpage, information on how to stockpile compost material, a very simple brown and green composting explanation for the novice gardener, and beginning edits for the transition kitchen page. You can see some of this work here. One community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. This week, the core team wrote the initial script and started creating the graphics for what will replace our regular Highest Good Education updates in the videos and website now that this component is pretty much complete until we move on to the property and develop it further with teachers and students. We also added more resources, a new table of contents, and instructions for using the Find function to the free online education resources page. The one community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, Jin Hua, web and graphic designer, Working with the core team, continued collaboration on our new online marketing strategy by updating our AdWords details, creating the sped up tutorial you see running here in the background, and teaching how to better do keyword research to improve it even more, and running reports to evaluate our updated marketing approach for these updates versus how we were doing it before. The Highest Good Network software team consisting of Samya Manahar, software engineer, web developer, and net application developer, and Shuber Mittal, software delivery manager, also returned to development. This week, they upgraded the HGN app from Circle CI 1.0 to 2.0 and enabled email deployment notifications, investigated the cause for the HGN timer counting two seconds at a time and disabled it for now, and added functionality for auto-refreshing when status changes are made to active, inactive in user management page. You can see some of this work here. Well, there you have it. There's one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of affordable sustainability for everybody everywhere. If you'd like more details, more specifics, links to all the open source content, you can visit our written blog. If you'd like to see an email every time one of these updates comes out, you can send an email to one community updates at gmail.com. If you'd like to help out, you can visit our helping page. Of course, the easiest way to help out is to join our social media uh, networks. We're on all the different social media networks to make it as easy as possible. We are on Pinterest, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Reddit, Tumblr, 
Uh, Facebook, of course, about 15 others to make it as easy as possible to participate. If you'd like to help out, just putting a like on our posts or making a comment or sharing our posts or sharing our content on social media is by far the easiest way to do it. And of course, you can visit our helping page if you like lots of other ways to participate. Uh, thank you for watching to the end. Thank you for somebody who's donated to our project. 100% of donations go towards our mission because none of us are paid for what it is that we're doing. I'm a volunteer and so is everybody else in the project. And... Uh, yeah, thanks for your support. Even if you're just energetically supporting us, we feel that that makes a difference. And so thanks for watching to the end, being a part of the project in whatever way it works for you, even if it's just watching these uh, videos or giving a like to one of our posts. We do appreciate you. And until next week, we will, of course, keep on keeping on. Thanks.